is totally worth it to be able to see the table. I guess this is one of the more unique champagne houses you can visit. You might be looking at the world's first biscuit and it's really a very calm and peaceful view. It's a specialty in Shrexburg and this is allegedly the oldest gothic building in the world. Today, we start our day in Rims and our very first stop is this red brick building behind us and this is the Museum of Surrender. On the 7th May 1945, this is where the Germans surrendered to the Allied forces and this is actually a school and it is still operating today. So the Allied forces chose this college as their secret base previously because it is the perfect cover and it's near to the train station. And inside the museum, the actual table that they sat on while the Germans signed the surrender is still on display. So it's a place of significance. And if you are here in Reims, you have to visit it. The entrance fee is only 550, but it's totally worth it. So next up, we'll be taking a train to Epony where our champagne experience will start. We will see you when we get there. Bye bye. We are just done visiting our second attraction and it is at a town called Epene. And here in Epene, they are known for their champagne production. There's a lot of champagne houses that you can visit, but because today is a Sunday, we chose one that is open. One thing to note if you are coming here to Epene is that on Sunday, most of the shops are closed. The champagne house that we have selected is called Mercier and it is quite a unique experience. I term it as an experience because we paid for a guided tour which includes a lift ride and a train ride and also a tasting session. I guess this is one of the more unique champagne houses you can visit because as part of the visit, you can actually tour an underground 18 km cave on an electric train. It's kind of like a Disneyland ride. I couldn't imagine that the tunnel has been built 2,000 years ago. Ah, 200 years ago. <laughs> Since 200 it's years ago. It's a bit drunk from the champagne. <laughs> it is built with primitive tools. It's quite a fit at that time. And also, as part of the experience, we get to know the history of Mercier and how they actually transported a huge barrel all the way from Hungary to France. They use about 24 bulls to transport it and they have to fell trees as well as demolish buildings just to let the barrel pass through. So it's quite a feat and he's probably very rich at that time because he actually purchased the buildings that are blocking the way of the barrel and demolish it. Yeah. <laughs> so overall, I think it has been a good experience and we would suggest you to pick this one because you can have a unique experience and also it's one of the more affordable ones. Definitely highly recommended to come here if you are visiting Epene. So now that we are done visiting this attraction, we will be heading back to Reims and we will see you when we get there. Bye bye! Bye bye! She's drunk. a bit drunk. <laughs> We are now back at our hotel in Reims. We unfortunately were not able to head to our very last attraction of the day which is the Notre Dame. In Google, it stated that it's open till 7.30 but we were there at 7pm and it has already closed for admission. So if you want to head there, do be there early. So some interesting facts about the Notre Dame Reims. It is built in the 13th century and it is bigger than the one in Paris. It has housed the coronation of 25 kings of France since its creation and is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So there's two other UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Realms but we also weren't able to visit it. So if you are planning to come to Realms, I think at least spend about two days. 
don't be like us. We spent most of the time traveling here and after that we went to Apony where our champagne experience was there and it took a little longer than we have planned. We initially planned for about one and a half hours but it took about two hours including the champagne tasting at the end. So yeah, do plan for more time if you want to visit more attractions here in Reims. The other thing about Reims is that if you come here on a Sunday, most of the shops are closed. We only were able to find a few restaurants or fast food chains that were open on Sunday and at least we managed to get this. So we didn't buy this in Reims, we bought this at a shop in Apony but this is the Fossier Rose Biscuit and it is one of the oldest biscuit style here in France and it dated back to the 17th century. What is interesting about this is that the term biscuit might have come from this. So you might be looking at the world's first biscuit. This is actually made out from a special dough and they bake this twice and they use the heat in between the batches of the bread to bake this. World's first biscuit. Definitely a must eat if you are here in Reims. They have a cafe but it is closed on Sunday. Thankfully, we were able to find this in a shop in Apony. This is the 100 gram box. They do have a smaller box but we ended up purchasing this. Hopefully, it is nice. So it comes in a packet of 12 like this. I shall open this. From the looks of it, it looks really sweet. The store owner who sold this to us mentioned that this goes really well with champagne. But we didn't buy any champagne from the Mercier just now. So I shall eat this with coffee. This has. The top part is sugar icing. So it's really very, very sweet. The pink portion is actually very crispy and it reminds me of a snack. So I have to taste this the second time. I'm trying to remember what it tastes like. It tastes like a cake. Even though it's a biscuit, it has the taste of a cake. It's actually pretty good but a little bit sweet. So if they do sell it without the sugar icing, it's actually quite a good snack. But like it is now a bit too sweet. Very, very interesting taste. If you are visiting Rams or Apony, do try this. Very unique texture. It is really very crispy and crunchy. But when you try to process the taste, like you are expecting it to be a biscuit, but it is a cake. So mind blowing. It's a wonderful morning and today we start our day at Strasbourg and as you can see it's clear sky and a beautiful view. So behind us is what they call the cover bridge so there's supposed to be a cover but since then I think they have removed it or it has been destroyed. In the past it is used as a defense system. From here which is a dam right in front of the cover bridge you can actually head up and see a panoramic view of the Petit France as well as the cover bridge and it's really a very calm and peaceful view. Definitely worth a quick stop if you are visiting Strasbourg and on the way to Petit France. Join us today as we visit attractions here in Strasbourg and we will see you when we get there. We are now at Petit France. In the olden days, a lot of tainer, fishermen and miller stay in this area due to the water supply. After we finish visiting the Petit France, we come across this bakery and everything inside the bakery looks so good. Hence, we bought a lot of different breads and cake. Firstly, we got coffee eclair. Let's see how it tastes. It is good. The cream tastes like kopiko. On top is slightly sweet, then the cream is very creamy, moist, and then the crust is slightly crispy. I think eclair in France is always very good. Other than the coffee eclair, we also bought the melanin. We have been in France for so many days, but we haven't tried this yet. I think it is a very simple dessert, but if it tastes different from what we had in Singapore, that will surprise me. Mm. The border is very crispy. The sponge very buttery and smell really good. I think they really use very good quality butter to make this. Lastly, Kogehof. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. So Kogehof is a specialty in Strasbourg, so cannot miss this while we are here. We bought the sweet version. There is a salty version with walnut on top. It looks like an ordinary cake of bread, but I bet it will be very good as well. Guess what? It's a bread. It's not sweet at all. It tastes like a raisin bread, 
because it has some raisin and then the almond on top and a slight taste of cinnamon. Behind us is the Notre Dame Strasbourg and we kind of came at the wrong time because it is closed for one and a half hours and we weren't able to get in but right outside the cathedral right now there is two queues one is to see the astrological clock and the other is to climb up to the cathedral as we don't really have time we are chasing several trains to Germany today so unfortunately we won't be able to visit both of them and we won't be able to get into the church so yeah I think these few days is a little bit unlucky for us because in Reims we weren't able to head inside the cathedral and now in Strasbourg we are also not able to head into the cathedral and this is allegedly the oldest gothic building in the world mm. it's such a shame that we are not able to go in yeah it's very very huge so at least it is not under maintenance and we are able to see all the sides of the building this is the last attraction in Strasbourg that we are visiting and we will be heading to our next country, Germany, and we will see you when we get there. Bye bye! It's a very long journey. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> we can board all the trains because most of them has only a five minutes interval between them. So, thanks for joining us in France, and we will see you in our next video. Bye bye! bye, -bye. Why is this sign exploding time in France?